ago. I own a restaurant in uh, Lakeview called Fatty Burgers and More, and I'm a happily married man. Uh, I represent myself, and I'm here to testify about my story. In 1994, I came out to my college football team at Texas Christian University. At that time, being an out Division I football player was unheard of. Uh, uh, in, uh, Texas. in Texas. In uh, Texas, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, and uh, in doing so, um, I was able to set uh, a single game sack record of four and a half sacks and helping our team get to, uh, to the conference championship and be able to go to a bowl game. That was something that TCU hadn't been able to do in a long time uh, before that. Uh, to understand how we got to that position, how I got to that place, you have to understand how I got there. I grew up in San Antonio, Texas, which was a military town and a state known for football. So I grew up in a macho environment. And I knew when I was in third grade that I was different. I didn't know how I was different, but I did know that the voices that I heard and the voices that I heard around me were talking negatively. Uh, Vincent will grow out of it. Uh, Vincent's life and his loafers. And all the other derogatory terms that come uh, with people who are gay, transgender, or lesbian. And I remember thinking uh, that I would grow out of it. You know, I thought that I would be eventually, you know, not be this negative thing that people would talk about. But as I progressed through junior high school and high school, the words got more maliceful, got more hateful, more derogatory. And I remember that I didn't want to be that. I didn't want to identify with that. I knew I was different. I knew I was with these, these words, these negative words that people were identifying with or connecting me with, but I didn't want to be that. I became a bully because I wanted to destroy that, that self-image that I had, that negative image that I had of myself. And I cannot, I can still to this day, uh, don't know how much damage I caused uh, to those people that I bullied because I didn't want to be gay. I didn't want to be that. I hope that eventually that I can move away from San Antonio, Texas and have the opportunity to be who I was. Lucky for me, I had an opportunity to play Division I football. I got invited by a lot of schools to play Division I football. I chose Texas Christian University uh, for a variety of reasons. One, uh, it was a small town uh, in Fort Worth. One, it was uh, allowed me the ability to hide in plain sight because it was TCU, Texas Christian University. And I thought that uh, when people would ask me, Vincent, how come you don't have a girlfriend? How come you're not dating anybody? I can say, well, I haven't found the right one, and I'm going to do the right thing, get married in my appropriate time. Um, but, you know, as, as that goes on, and as others I've mentioned here, uh, it, it, it pits a dark uh, hole inside you. Uh, you. You feel empty on the inside. And I remember thinking to myself, what's the point? What's the point of doing all this stuff if all I got is I'm going to burn in hell and if all I got is going to be empty on the inside? And in my sophomore year, if I had access to a gun, if I had access to pills, I wouldn't be here today. But lucky for me, at Texas Christian University, TCU started a program called uh, uh, a support group called the TCU uh, Triangle, which was started by my partner. Okay. And in that group, uh, I was able to get support from other gay, lesbian, transgender youth. All right? uh, and for two years, they held my secret uh, as I got support and felt more comfortable in being who I was. Uh, and then in my senior year, they asked me to do uh, something called an ecumenical exchange. An ecumenical exchange is where uh, religious organizations and church get together from all over the state and discuss the subject matter. And that year, it was about homosexuality and acceptance. And I remember they allowed us the opportunity to opt out of that, but I knew at that point that that was the place that I was going to come out to my team and come out to everybody else. And I did that. I came out that day. Uh, I remember being delighted. I remember being excited. I remember being happy because for the first time, I was able to be 100%. I was able to be myself uh, with no inhibitions. But at the same time, I was a little concerned because after that ecumenical exchange, we had our defensive meetings. And I remember thinking, oh, no. What have I just done? I remember thinking that I was going to be okay. That was up until uh, after the meeting, after our position meeting, our, my position coach uh, dismissed all the different uh, linebackers in the room and said, Vincent, you need to stay. I need to talk to you. And then at that heart, it's when my heart sank because I felt, well, here it is. Here's the massive embarrassment. Here's the phone call that I have to make uh, to my uncle, uh, who was uh, my hero in sports, and let him know that I was going to be asked to leave uh, Texas Christian University. To my surprise, uh, my coach, Coach Ray, now if I, could, if I can mimic his voice the best way I can, he's a military man with a southern cadence. And he said, Mr. Brock, is it true that you went in front of a group of people and told them that you were homosexual? I was scared to death. I didn't know what was going to happen. I, I, I thought it was over, right? And for a minute there, I paused and said, no, it's not true, Coach. Just, you know, a little science. I said, I told him that I was gay. 
And with that southern draw, and to my surprise, he said, Vince, it takes a big set of balls to be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember we both giggled, and he said, Vincent, we knew something was wrong. Me and my wife knew something was wrong. We knew that you weren't connecting. We knew that you were withdrawn from the team. And we knew that you cannot, you were not playing at your full potential. Just let you know, I just want to let you know that we support you and we got your back and whatever you need. That weekend, we played Texas Tech for the, the share of the conference title. I went out and uh, set, uh, set a record for four and a half sacks in a game. Uh, we were able to go to a bowl game, something that Texas Christian University hadn't done in a long time at that point. I was surprised, and I believe what transpired in that period of time was the support that I got from my fellow football players in the room. When they were asked afterwards, how do you feel about having a gay teammate on your football team? Almost all of them responded, it doesn't matter because he can play football. That's all that matters, that he can play football. These are people who play in professional sports like Lenoy Jones, Ryan Tucker, Galen Hyder, who supported me back then. And on a side note, just so you know, not everybody's going to be supporting, support people who are trailblazers out, trailblazers out there. After the season was over, there was a, an incident in the hallway in which a player was speaking negatively about me. He did not know that I was in the same hallway with him. And I didn't know that Galen Hyder was in the hallway with him as well. And when that person made that negative comment, big 6'7", 290-pound Galen Hyder said, what are you doing? Vincent has never done anything wrong with you, and you and I both know he can play football. So if it was true back then in 1994, I can't see why that cannot be true today in 2013. There are gay athletes in college. There are gay athletes in professional sports. There's gay kids playing Little League football, Little League baseball. I ask and encourage you to pass this resolution uh, to be a leader. Uh, in, in, this, in this arena, so you can support those kids. Uh, that athlete, that eventual athlete that comes out, and let them know that he has that support. Because if I didn't have that support at Texas Christian University, I might not have been here to this day. Thank you. Thank you very much.